Yeah, I don't think Mother knew about this. Uncle Marvin was strangled by his own beard. Yeah, you never saw it coming. And welcome to another edition of Extreme Genes, America's family history show, and ExtremeGenes.com. It is Fisher, your radio root sleuth on the program where we shake your family tree and watch the nuts fall out. And this, of course, is our special Roots Tech edition. It's going on while Roots Tech is happening. And if you're not familiar with that, Roots Tech happens to be the largest family history conference in the world. Something like 25,000 people converging on the Salt Palace in Salt Lake City, Utah right now. And if you're listening to this, no matter where you are, you can follow along and hear some of the talks, see some of the classes by going to rootstech.org. They've got streaming video going on there all the time. So check that out. And then next week, we're going to tell you more about some of the things that we learn, new technology, some of the things happening in some of the classes, some of the exciting directions that family history is going in. But right now in studio with me, my good friend from Boston, Massachusetts, the chief genealogist of the New England Historic Genealogical Society and AmericanAncestors.org, David Allen Lambert. How are you, David? Good to I'm have you. I'm doing great. Well, we're going to have lots to talk about next week with Roots Tech, but I have some other exciting news for our listeners with Family Histoire News. All right. Where do we start? Well, we're digging deep right into the old bus station at 126th Street in Harlem. Boy, that's uh, right. In the heart of Harlem, it isn't really it? is. Wow, they found over 140 bones from an old Dutch cemetery. But this isn't Dutch settlers; these are African Americans that were part of the settlement. Probably some of them were actually would have been slaves. And these are from the 17th and 18th century. And with this, with DNA and all this, they found it in this decommissioned bus station that they had speculation that it was a cemetery under there and started digging in. Voila. <laughs> Voila. Wow. There seems to be a lot of that because going across the pond over to Driftfield Terrace in York, Yorkshire, England, they have now been analyzing over 80 skeletons of Romans that they have unearthed a few years back. Now, I, I saw the digital pictures of this, and they have each individual Roman skeleton laid out on a table. And it is, uh, I, you can't describe it as anything less than creepy. It is creepy. But the results are going to be very exciting. They're using the inner ear bone right. to extract the uh, DNA information. And it's really interesting. You think of... They're all from Rome. Not really. Mm -hmm. Their descendants are going to be surprised. They're going to find that they have some descendants that match with people that have lived in Wales. And also, surprisingly enough, one of the skeletons matches with someone from Palestine or the Saudi Arabia area. Because obviously the Roman Empire stretched all over the place. The injuries are interesting. It looks like somebody was mauled by a bear or something like that. (laughs) And the interesting thing, a lot of them were decapitated. Now, was this? I don't know what that means. But, I don't either. And they, it, they say they're all under 45 years old. Yeah. And they're all kind of, you know, they're very strong men and that they were gladiators is what they're determining with these guys. And we're talking going back now, 1800 years. We're talking about 200 years after Christ. Unbelievable. It is. And, you know, with everybody out there that's had their 23 chromosomes done and their DNA work, who knows? They may have dug up great, 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 great grandpa. <laughs> Well, you know, we have exciting news in Boston to announce that it's Black History Month for the month of February, and we are always giving out a guest user database at AmericanAncestors.org. And the one I want to talk about is the one that we have commemorating Black History Month. So if you go onto our site, you can start as a guest user at AmericanAncestors.org, and you can find rich content of an African-American study. We've gathered up databases that reflect African-American research, and whether you're of an African-American descent or you are a historian in general, curious to what we have, take a peek. I'll tell you, you get some interesting emails, but the other day I got a video sent to me from President Nixon. (laughs) How did you do that, Fish? That was kind of scary and creepy, but I enjoyed it. <laughs> All right. For, for anybody listening who, who maybe doesn't follow us on the Facebook page, there is a new app out. And I didn't even mention it in the page. I didn't want to spoil it, but I guess I need to let the cat out of the bag. It's something called Face Swap Live. It's 99 cents. You download it on your phone and you can take anybody's face and it can be put on yours. 
So, you know, in my case, because I do a lot of character voices and impressions and all that, I'd find famous people and I'd put their face on mine with this app and record something. In this case, I recorded a thing as Nixon and sent it on to David. And uh, but it's unbelievable. It's better than a mask. It looks like that person is still with us. Well, you know, for genealogists that like to really dig deep into their ancestry and want to get to know their ancestor, well, guess what? Now you can become your ancestor. Yeah, that's true. Get a great photo of grandpa or a great, great grandpa and scan it and put it right into your phone and this app. And all of a sudden, voila, you are now talking to your ancestor or you're talking as your ancestor or something like that. Well, I was trying to figure out what would be the application for family history with this thing. Because, first of all, it's so much fun, you know, mm-hmm. for parties or just among friends. It'll, it'll also swap faces. So if you get two of you in a picture, it'll swap your face with somebody else's face, and you'll be in a, on each other's head. It's crazy. <laughs> but when you do this other stuff, you could actually record yourself using the face of your ancestor for that ancestor to tell their own story. Now, how cool and bizarre is that? It, re- it really <laughs> is. And I can tell you that I'm going to really scare some of my family members in the next coming weeks with this app uh, when they have visits from people like former co-workers that they didn't want to hear from. <laughs> or uh, better yet, I have some co-workers back in Boston that might get some interesting messages sent from themselves. Uh, yes. Stay tuned. <laughs> Those things can happen. And, and once again, the name of the app is Face Swap Live. It's just 99 cents. You just download it onto your phone, and it's right there. It's very easy to use. Just play with it a little bit, and you'll get the hang of it very quickly. You can download pictures. You can take pictures to use. They have some, a little supply for you to play with to start with, uh, but you can do anything. In fact, I did a thing with uh, the captain of the Titanic and did right. an interview with him. <laughs> with that it looked a little frosty. <laughs> it did look a little, he looked very cold. Yes. Well, you know, I'll tell you, tech tips are wonderful. And obviously with next week, with everything we'll talk about with uh, Roots Tech, you're going to hear lots of them. One of the apps that I'm going to be talking about will obviously be the exciting new one by MyHeritage, their audio app yes. that's coming out. It's going to be really uh, a neat way of saving your family stories with your genealogy program. Yeah, that's a great way to go. Anytime you can add audio and video, that really uh, brings it alive, especially when you can preserve a voice. Exactly. Because or preserve a video of someone who yes. really isn't on a video that exists because that camera wasn't invented yet, Fish. <laughs> <laughs> but I love the idea that even if you have just nice photographs, you can run their audio over those and mix those together to create a nice presentation. Wonderful stuff. And let me mention that I'm going to be reporting live for your listeners from Birmingham, England. And who do you think you are live in England coming up in April? Oh, that's going to be fun. It will. It'd be nice to go across the pond. My grandfather was from there, so I've got some genealogy to do as well. And EHS is doing a tour of London afterwards. So I'm sneaking in to do Who Do You Think You Are a little early with a couple of our staff. And we can't wait to meet all the people that are attending and get some stories from the floor of the conference right for our listeners. Oh, it's going to be a lot of fun. All right, David, I am very excited today because I have shared with our guest, Nancy Douglas, a handwriting analyst, handwriting samples of some of my ancestors to see what she can tell me about their personalities and what they might have been going through actually at the time that they wrote these samples. How cool is this? That's exciting. Yes. So we're going to do two full segments with her today. We're going to talk about how she can actually help you know the personality of your ancestors through their handwriting. And then another segment talking about my particular people. I haven't told her anything about them. Then I will share what I know about them with her and see how much these stories match up. That's going to be coming up in about three minutes. So stay close on Extreme Genes, America's Family History Show. Unknown Parentage, Lineage Society Membership, Building Your Family Tree, Leaving a Legacy. Regardless of your reasons for hiring a professional researcher, Legacy Tree Genealogists can help you discover your family's past. Their genealogists are highly rated in their field with specialties in DNA analysis, historical context, and forensic genealogy. For nearly 20 years, Legacy Tree Genealogists have created thousands of professionally bound and digital reports for families like yours around the world. So whether you've hit a brick wall in your research or are just getting started, Legacy 
Legacy Tree Genealogist can help you tell your story and preserve it for generations to come. To receive a free estimate for professional research, visit LegacyTree.com or call 1-800-818-1476. That's 1-800-818-1476. We'd be happy to talk to you. Legacy Tree Genealogist. Hey Genies, it's Fisher here, and my shiny new ExtremeJeans.com website has been described as having that new car smell. I love hearing that. Having been with you for over eight years now, it felt like time to help out listeners and followers who need to know the basics of genealogical research, as well as how to understand your DNA test results, and to be able to put them to work for you breaking down brick walls, identifying birth parents, locating new cousins who may have photos and information that can't be found anywhere else, and verifying your paper trails. Yes, DNA can do all that, and I can show you how. Check out the all-new ExtremeGenes.com website and download the free Genealogy Strategy Roadmap and the free DNA Starter Guide. Then if you like what you see, you can take those next steps to sign up for the video courses that you can watch at your leisure. I'll take you through all the basics step-by-step. Find out more now at ExtremeGenes.com. Hey, Genies. Ancestry now has an exclusive partnership with PhotoMine, the leader in photo scanning and archiving. What does this mean to you? Well, imagine inheriting an old photo album and you want to digitize all the images. Up until now, you'd have to remove the pictures, place them in a scanner, crop them, and perhaps use Photoshop to improve them. Now, by using these amazing PhotoMine tools from Ancestry, you can use your phone to take a picture of an entire page from your album. The tools will automatically separate and crop each picture, improve focus, and restore color or colorize your images. Then you can assign which picture goes to which person on your tree. If you've been waiting years to get around to the tedious project of scanning your old albums, it's been worth the wait. No more pulling your photo albums apart and trying to reinsert the pictures back in proper order. No more tearing of your old photos while removing them from those so-called magnetic albums of the 1970s. Sign in to Ancestry through their mobile app to try it out. And you have found us, America's Family History Show, Extreme Genes and ExtremeGenes.com. My name is Fisher, the radio root sleuth, and I'm very excited to have on Nancy Douglas. Now, Nancy has a website called RightMeaning.com. That's W-R-I-T-E Meaning.com which has to do with analyzing the handwriting of your ancestors. And I'm sure there are other uses for this as well, Nancy, but I know that that's uh, certainly one of the emphases that you like to place on what you do. Yes, that's correct, Scott. Now, how long ago did you start this whole thing? Um, I started this when I moved to Utah in 2000, around 2007, and I moved in across the street from a woman whose best friend was a professional handwriting analyst. And I always had a fascination with handwriting ever since I was little. I remember people by their handwriting. And uh, this gal had a series of courses that she offered, and I took those classes, and then I apprenticed with her for four or five years. Wow. Through that process, I realized that it could be um, one aspect of the services that I provide would be to provide personality profiles for people who happen to have ancestral writing. So that's been, it's been something that's been very well-received and very successful. Now, you left Utah for California some time back, and you set up business there. What kind of applications have you applied other than the family history side of it? For living people, um, just general personality profile and personality insight. From a work perspective, I offer employment screening for people who are looking for um, employees with certain personality traits. I can help them screen the people who have applied for those positions and get people into positions uh, who most closely fit the profile of who they're looking for. And that's been very successful as well. It's an excellent way to make sure that people get fit into the correct position and it reduces uh, employee turnover. Um, I can also do team building, uh, something similar to the Myers-Briggs type indicator, but using handwriting where uh, handwriting will reveal to, you know, your coworkers more about who you are and the ways that you can work together when you have disparate personality profiles. Now, I was talking to a friend of mine once who was uh, dating somebody she knew, and she actually had his handwriting analyzed 
by somebody who actually does this uh, for for criminal cases where they can actually determine if somebody has a past. Now, do you do things like that? I don't do specifically forensic um, analyzing. That's what that's called when you do that uh, for the court system. There certainly are many analysts who that is what they specialize in. I, but I do do uh, compatibility screening. So uh, whether it's a business partner who you want to make sure if you're going into business, will we be compatible as partners or if it's someone who you're looking to um, have as a life partner, I can do compatibility screenings and talk with the people about the, the traits in each of their personalities that would be beneficial or not so great. In addition, um, in, a, in this day and age of online dating and online profiles where you really don't know somebody, um, it's, it's a good idea to get an idea of who they are, and their handwriting is very revealing about that. So huh. I use that uh, someone, if you're doing online dating and you really want to know, send me a sample of their writing. And I can tell you if you should just run as fast as you can or <laughs> if it's safe to stick around. That is amazing. Well, this has been very fun to talk to you as we set up this interview because I did send you some samples down of some of my ancestors' handwriting. And uh, yep. for you to take a look at, just go ahead as to which ones you think are the most interesting from the top, and we'll kind of go through them. Okay, that would be fine. I want to get just a little bit of quick background on the areas that look at in someone's handwriting, just so your listeners have an idea of that. We look at the slant of someone's writing, and that's based on what are called the upper zone letters. So in handwriting, there's three zones, your upper zones, which, for example, would be like an L or a T, lower zone letters, for example, G or Y, and middle zone letters, uh, you know, I, M, N, those types of letters. Sure. And each of those zones has something to do with your personality. So upper zone letters represent everything going on in your head, um, your philosophies, your ideas, your creativity, imagination, intellect. Middle zone letters, when I look at those, those reflect the day-to-day here and now, what's going on in someone's life. And the lower zone letters represent all things physical, your physical drives and desires around acquisition of money, your sexuality, your desire for change level of restlessness, those types of things show up in the lower zone. So we look at that. We look at the slants, like I said. We look at the baseline. Um, We look at individual letter formations, and we look at how letters are connected together. Those are just a few of the things that we look at. There's many more things, but I wanted to give a little background to your listeners on that. So for you um, and your ancestors, you sent me basically four samples of writing. And the first one, I think you said, is your second great-grandfather? Yeah, actually, there are a couple of second greats in there. Okay, so this is the small sample. It's from the Bible of John Hardy. Okay, yes. And he was a person who was very driven, and that shows up in the letter T. He was a very restless person. He liked change. He liked to do a variety of things. He had very good leadership skills. Uh, at the time of this writing, he was feeling a lot of personal pressure. Yes. And very, he was feeling very squeezed with everything that he had to do in his life at that time. Uh, he was very geared towards the physical aspects of life. Like I said, that lower zone, his lower zone really pops out as being much more emphasized than the middle zone and the upper zone mm-hmm. in this writing. And so someone who's very driven by material acquisition wants to make sure that he's taking care of himself and his family from a monetary sense. Those types of things. And that's also where the restlessness shows up as well. The other thing that jumped out, again, was he was a very, was a very tenacious person. And again, going back to that drive, and that shows up in the variety of ways that he crosses his letter T. So that's a little bit about that, grandfather. All right. Let me tell you a little about what I know about him. He was born in uh, the area of Nottinghamshire, England, in the early 1800s. He was married briefly to a woman who died uh, young. He lost a child, and then he married my great-great-grandmother. They came to America. He was uh, what they call a boot closer, and they came to New York City and settled there. And at the time that he wrote that, uh, they had just lost a baby girl. And so he inscribed this Bible to his wife at that time, obviously, in my mind, just based on the date, to give her comfort. Mm, mm Mm-hmm. Very good. One of the things, this is a photocopy of that, and so I I can't see all of the level of detail, but it's interesting that he also appears a little bit tired at this time. 
Mm -hmm. the upstrokes on his lower zone letters. I don't know if you're looking at the sample with me at the same time. I'm not. Upstrokes and lower zone letters are much lighter. So when you, the downstroke's easy to make, you're going with gravity. But when you're pushing up against that, if you don't have enough sort of vital life energy when you're doing that, it will show up as much lighter. And that's typ a typical sign of someone who's feeling kind of tired at that time. So that's an interesting reflection about yes. that and what he's writing about. Okay, great. Who else do you have there? The next sample that you sent was uh, out of also out of a Bible, mm -hmm. the family Bible page of the Fishers. And you um, you'd ask me to look specifically at the smaller writing at the bottom of this. But what's interesting to note is that this is a great example of slant. So yes. the person who wrote the top part has a very vertical to recline slant. And yes, slant, well, slant tells us about how you go about making decisions. Are you an emotional decision maker or are you a logical decision maker? People with vertical writing are very, very logical. They're what we call the head over heart people. They're good to have around in a time of crisis. So they don't let emotions run away with them, and they don't, you know, crack under pressure. So that who, who's the writing on the top? Is that that would be that would be Robert Fisher, who was another second great grandfather, and uh, he was raised by a stepfather whose name he took. At least I believe that's the case. I've never been able to prove it, but uh, there's a lot of reason to believe that was the case. And it doesn't appear he had much of a relationship with him. So I think he, he grew up being a tough guy emotionally, became very involved with the Baptist Church in Brooklyn, New York, founded a church there, was, was part of it. He wasn't clergy, but he was very involved in that. And I think he was a very stern father with his children. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. I can see that in here. So we do have, like I said, this vertical writing, too, interestingly reclined. And when your writing begins to get reclined, it's people who withhold emotion. Yes. And so he would not have been a very warm and uh, giving person with other people in that sense. He was very reserved, emotionally reserved. All right, we're going to take a break. And when we return, we're going to talk more with Nancy Douglas, the handwriting analyst from writemeaning.com. That's W-R-I-T-E meaning.com. And she's going to look at some of the signatures of, shall we say, one of my more colorful ancestors when we return in five minutes on America's Family History Show, Extreme Genes and ExtremeGenes.com. found us america's family history show extreme genes and extremegenes.com my name is fisher the radio root sleuth and i'm very excited to have on nancy douglas now nancy has a website called writemeaning.com that's w r i t e meaning.com which has to do with analyzing the handwriting of your ancestors. And I'm sure there are other uses for this as well, Nancy, but I know that that's uh, certainly one of the emphasis is that you like to place on what you do. Yes, that's correct, Scott. Now, how long ago did you start this whole thing? Um, I started this when I moved to Utah in 2000, around 2007, and I moved in across the street from a woman whose best friend was a professional handwriting analyst. And this gal had a series of courses that she offered, and I took those classes, and then I apprenticed with her for four or five years. Wow. Now, you left Utah for California some time back, and you set up business there. What kind of applications have you applied other than the family history side of it? For living people, um, just general personality profile and personality insight. From a work perspective, I offer employment screening for people who are looking for um, employees with certain personality traits. I can help them screen the people who have applied for those positions and get people into positions uh, who most closely fit the profile of who they're looking for. Now, I was talking to a friend of mine once who was uh, dating somebody she knew, and she actually had his handwriting analyzed by somebody who actually does this uh, for, for criminal cases where they can actually determine if somebody has a past. Now, do you do things like that? I don't do specifically forensic um, analyzing. That's what that's called when you do that um, for the court system. There certainly are many analysts who that is what they specialize in. I, but I do do uh, compatibility screening. So 
uh, whether it's a business partner who you want to make sure if you're going into business, will we be compatible as partners or if it's someone who you're looking to um, have as a life partner, I can do compatibility screenings and talk with the people about the, the traits in each of their personalities that would be beneficial or not so great. In addition, um, in, a, in this day and age of online dating and online profiles where you really don't know somebody, um, it's it's a good idea to get an idea of who they are, and their handwriting is very revealing about that. So huh. I use that uh, someone, if you're doing online dating and you really want to know, send me a sample of their writing, and I can tell you if you should just run as fast as you can <laughs> or if you stick around. That is amazing. Well, this has been very fun to talk to you as we set up this interview because I did send you some samples down of some of my ancestors' handwriting. And uh, yep. for you to take a look at, just go ahead as to which ones you think are the most interesting from the top, and we'll kind of go through them. Okay, that would be fine. I want to give just a little bit of quick background sure. on the areas that I look at in someone's handwriting, just so your listeners have an idea of that. We look at the slant of someone's writing, and that's based on what are called the upper zone letters. So in handwriting, there's three zones, your upper zones, which, for example, would be like a, an L or a T. Lower zone letters, for example, G or Y, and middle zone letters, um, you know, I, M, N, those types of letters. Sure. And each of those zones has something to do with your personality. So upper zone letters represent everything going on in your head, um, your philosophies, your ideas, your creativity, imagination, intellect. Middle zone letters, when I look at those, those reflect the day-to-day -day here and now, what's going on in someone's life. And the lower zone letters represent all things physical, your physical drives and desires around acquisition of money, your sexuality, your desire for change, level of restlessness, those types of things show up in the lower zone. So we look at that. We look at the slants, like I said. We look right. at the baseline. Um, we look at individual letter formations, and we look at how letters are connected together. Those are just a few of the things that we look at. There's many more things, but I wanted to give a little background to your listeners on that. So for you um, and your ancestors, you sent me basically four samples of writing. And the first one, I think you said, is your second great-grandfather? Yeah, actually, there are a couple of second greats in there. Okay. So this is the small sample. It's from the Bible of John Hardy. Okay, yes. And he was a person who was very driven, and that shows up in the letter T. He was a very restless person. He liked change. He liked to do a variety of things. He had very good leadership skills. Uh, at the time of this writing, he was feeling a lot of personal pressure. Yes. And very, he was feeling very squeezed with everything that he had to do in his life at that time. Uh, he was very geared towards the physical aspects of life. Like I said, that lower zone, his lower zone really pops out as being much more emphasized in the middle zone and the upper zone mm -hmm. in this writing. And so someone who's very driven by material acquisition wants to make sure that he's taking care of himself and his family from a monetary sense, those types of things. And that's also where the restlessness shows up as well. The other thing that jumped out again was he's a very was a very tenacious person. And again, going back to that drive, and that shows up in the variety of ways that he crosses his letter T. So that's a little bit about that, grandfather. All right, let me tell you a little about what I know about him. He was born in uh, the area of Nottinghamshire, England, in the early 1800s. He was married briefly to a woman who died uh, young. He lost a child, and then he married my great-great-grandmother. They came to America. He was uh, what they call a boot closer, and they came to New York City and settled there. And at the time that he wrote that, uh, they had just lost a baby girl. And so he inscribed this Bible to his wife at that time, obviously, in my mind, just based on the date, to give her comfort. Mm, mm -hmm. Very good. One of the things, this is a photocopy of that, and so I, didn't, I can't see all of the level of detail, but it's interesting that it, he also appears a little bit tired at this time. Mm -hmm. The upstrokes on his lower zone letters, I don't know if you're looking at the sample with me at the same time. I'm not. The upstrokes and lower zone letters are much lighter so when you, the downstroke's easy to make, you're going with gravity, but when you're pushing up against that, if you don't have enough sort of vital life energy when you're doing that, it will show up as much lighter, and that's a typical sign of someone who's feeling kind of tired at that time. So that's an interesting reflection about yes. that and what he's writing about. Okay, great. Who else do you have there? 
the next sample that you sent was uh, out of also out of a Bible, mm-hmm. the family Bible page of the Fishers, and you um, you'd asked me to look specifically at the smaller writing at the bottom of this. But what's interesting to note is that this is a great example of slants. So the yes. person who wrote the top part has a very vertical to recline slant. And yes. Slant, well, slant tells us about how you go about making decisions. Are you an emotional decision maker or are you a logical decision maker? People with vertical writing are very, very logical. They're what we call the head over heart people. They're good to have around in a time of crisis. So they don't let emotions run away with them and they don't, you know, crack under pressure. So that. Who's the writing on the top of that? That would be that would be Robert Fisher, who was another second great grandfather, and uh, he was raised by a stepfather whose name he took. At least I believe that's the case. I've never been able to prove it, but uh, there's a lot of reason to believe that was the case. And it doesn't appear he had much of a relationship with him. So I think he he grew up being a tough guy emotionally, became very involved with the Baptist Church in Brooklyn, New York, founded a church there, was was part of it. He wasn't clergy, but he was very involved in that. And I think he was a very stern father with his children. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I can see that in here. So we do have, like I said, this vertical writing, too, interestingly reclined. And when your writing begins to get reclined, it's people who withhold emotion. Yes. And so he would not have been a very warm and uh, giving person with other people in that sense. He was very reserved, emotionally reserved. All right. We're going to take a break. And when we return, we're going to talk more with Nancy Douglas, the handwriting analyst from writemeaning.com. That's W-R-I-T-E meaning.com. And she's going to look at some of the signatures of, shall we say, one of my more colorful ancestors. When we return in five minutes on America's Family History Show, Extreme Genes and ExtremeGenes.com. Hey, Genies. As we've dug into our family history explorations over the past year, our community at Genealogy and Family History Breakthrough Strategies has taken off. This is where you can meet like-minded genealogists who can help you break through those brick walls and find a whole city behind it occupied by ancestors whose names you don't even know yet. This is where you can learn from your fellow Genies and ask questions because many in our community have already been into some of the records you're looking for. Genealogy and Breakthrough Strategies is free. What a great place for brainstorming and getting to know other people who totally get your passion for family history research. If you're looking to take the next step in sharpening your skills, here's a great chance to learn from others and give back in areas you've already become expert in. So join us. That page again is Genealogy and Family History Breakthrough Strategies. It's a long name, but we cover a lot of territory. Genealogy and Family History Breakthrough Strategies. Genies, if you haven't done so yet, you've got to check out Ancestry.com's new storytelling creation center, Ancestry Stories. Their story builder allows you to create a story with six different slide types, including a title page, a photo display page, including stock pictures they provide, and documents. And you can write a summary. And with those photos, you can add motion, panning left to right or right to left. For now, these stories can only be created on your iPhone, but Android is still to come and can be saved to your ancestors' pages on your trees. You can then access via phone, and in time, it'll appear on your desktop. You can also share it with family members and friends, whether or not they subscribe to Ancestry.com. For the younger generation that wants stories in a quick and easy-to-consume form, you can't beat this. I've already shared a story with my family, and the reactions are remarkable. Try out these incredible new tools and share your new story creations on social media using hashtag MyAncestry story unknown parentage lineage society membership building your family tree leaving a legacy regardless of your reasons for hiring a professional researcher legacy tree genealogists can help you discover your family's past their genealogists are highly rated in their field with specialties in dna analysis historical context and forensic genealogy for nearly 20 years legacy tree genealogists have created thousands of professionally bound and digital reports for families like yours around the world so whether you've hit a brick wall in your research or are just getting started 
Legacy Tree Genealogists can help you tell your story and preserve it for generations to come. To receive a free estimate for professional research, visit LegacyTree.com or call 1-800-818-1476. That's 1-800-818-1476. We'd be happy to talk to you. Legacy Tree Genealogists. And we are back. America's Family History Show, Extreme Genes and ExtremeGenes.com. It is Fisher here, the Radio Root Sleuth, and it is preservation time with our preservation authority, Tom Perry from TMCPlace.com. Hello, Tommy. Hello. It's wonderful to be here again. Yes, and we do have a question here that has been emailed to AskTom at TMCPlace.com. It's from Lisa Sorensen. Doesn't say where she's from, but Lisa asks, I'm interested in having a very old photo album digitized. Two old albums, actually. Do you work with very old photos, and what would the cost be to have this done? Oh, absolutely. You bet. We do photo albums. You know, photo albums is really generic. It's like saying photograph. Right. There's different kinds of albums. I've seen ones with daguerreotypes in them. I've seen ones that actually have the old glass plates. We've seen ones that are torn, that are faded, all kinds of things. It's going to depend what condition your photos are in, how old they are, if you want any changes with them. For instance, we had somebody brought in a photo album that we were digitizing, and then they called us and said, hey, my mother's just passed away. We need a good photo for her obituary. And my favorite photo of her is the one with her and me at my wedding. However, I'm in the picture, too, and I don't want to be in her obituary. And if I just cut myself out, I'm going to have to cut off her shoulder. It's going to look really bad. What can you do? So what we did is we actually had our artist go in and remove him, rebuild her shoulder, and then it looked just like it was a single picture. It looked Wonderful. Right. Yes. It's just amazing what you can do with apps, what you can do with Photoshop, different kinds of software. So the biggest thing is to figure out exactly what you want. If you want them just digitized and you want to do all your work with them, it's pretty inexpensive to um, do photos, whether you have us do it or a reputable place by you. Just make sure that wherever you get it done, that they do it in-house. I hear all kinds of horror stories where somebody sends them off to India or something oh. like that to save some money, and there's no way I would do that. There's no way. So I try to find somebody local. If you are going to ship it, I always tell people, make sure you double box everything and put a label on both boxes just in case the worst case happens. We've been doing this for over 40 years. Unfortunately, we've never lost anything in any transit one way or another. And you might want to go back to one of our older episodes that are available on the podcast, the free podcast, where we tell you actually how to make a box, the best way yes, to do it. That's right. That's a good point. You know, when they use the term old, an old photo album, well, what does that mean? You know, maybe to Lisa, old is the 1960s. Oh, absolutely. To me, it's the 1920s, and maybe to somebody else, it's the 1870s. Oh, yeah, exactly. We have people call us all the time and say, oh, I've got this film. It's so old. Can you still transfer? It's from the 70s. And it's like, <laughs> okay. I mean, we have stuff that's playing in our store, for instance, that's back the old black and white days, the early 1900s, where you see these 1920 Model A Forge drive past. Really? Said, oh, yeah, absolutely. You've, been, you've actually went and digitized some of those. Oh, yeah. We've got them playing in our store. The customer gave us permission to play them. We had people that had to want to colorize black and white. We had people that want to go and take outlaws out of their home movies, all kinds of things, just like this photo album. Wait, wait a minute. You can actually colorize black and white home movies? Oh, absolutely. Really? Oh, yeah. It's not cheap, no and idea. I wouldn't do it. Right. <laughs> I mean, I've got some old black and whites my dad shot that I wouldn't want to colorize them because that changes the whole thing of it. Just like some of the old I Love Lucy movies when I watched them when they were black and white. I don't like seeing them right. in color. No, I agree with you. I don't like it, for instance, when they colorize something like It's a Wonderful Life. Exactly. It's just it's not right. Right, because you got to understand when that show was done and they cast it and they got their costume directors, et cetera, they knew it was going to be in black and white. So they used colors that looked good in black and white that would complement each other, not clash. But when you take those and turn them into the colors, that's not what the producer had in mind. That's not what the continuity people had in mind. And to me, it just it's uncomfortable. Right. But you can do it. Oh, I mean, yeah. That's oh, the absolutely. fun part. We had a customer that has an ex-son-in-law. We had to edit them out of all their photo albums. We edited them out of their movies, everything. So you'd see <laughs> you'd see this water skiing, and he was in the back of the boat, and you'd see this water skier, and just it would get to him, we'd have to cut this time-lapse thing that's kind of lost. If you can imagine it, we can do it. That's absolutely astonishing. All right, we got another question coming up. We'll take a break. We'll be back in three minutes with more from Tom Perry on Extreme Genes, America's Family History Show.
You know, I don't know why, Tom, we get some people who write in and they give us their name, but not where they're from. And then other people who tell us where they're from and not their names. Exactly. That's the case (laughs) with this next question. Hey, it's Extreme Genes, America's family history show with Fisher here, your radio root sleuth and Tom Perry from TMCPlace.com answering questions about preservation. And uh, this one's from Santa Ana, California, asking about flash drives. And he says, if you plug it into the back of his computer, everything's great. But if you put it in a flat screen TV, nothing. What's the story with that, Tom? Okay, there could be several different things there. We had a customer the other day that actually stopped in our store. And she said, oh, I've got this flash drive. I need these photos. I take and I look at it. And what it is, it's actually a USB adapter with a micro SD card into it. So she just thought it was a normal flash drive, but it's not. It has a removable SD card in it. So there's all different kinds of things out there, but the way they work, the nomenclature, so to speak, is all the same. Okay. So what you need to do is know what format it is. A lot of times we ask people well, when they call in or they write in what format are your files, and they go, huh? So what you want to do, you'll want to take whatever kind of format you have, whether it's a USB drive, whether it's a disk, it's irrelevant. Put it in your computer, and if you're a Windows user for like a PC, what you want to do is once you see the icon on your desktop – you just double-click on just the icon. You don't want to open up anything inside that. And so that'll expand the window, and then you'll see all your files. Then you want to go to the top of your screen and tell it to sort by properties. And that will show you the file name, the file size, if it's a MOV, if it's a PDF, no matter what file it is. And then a lot of times, if you're going to have us do work or you don't know even what these files mean, do a screenshot on your computer, and then you can email that to us or have it in front of you when you're talking to us, okay? If it's a Mac, you don't have to search under properties. The same thing, you put the disk in the USB drive, double-click so it opens the folder, and then it'll automatically on a Mac give you all that kind of stuff generally. And so you'll do the same thing. Oh, I have MOVs, I have AVIs, I have XYZs, whatever they happen to be. And there's all kinds of weird things out there. And if you want to research them, all you got to do is take the dot, whatever it is, type it into Google, and it'll tell you what it is. If you don't want to deal with that, give us a call. We'll find out what ones can be transferred to video, what ones are executable files, so they're not really something that you'd want to actually watch on a DVD. They're more of like a a brain to tell something else what to do. So once you get those to us, then we can figure out, okay, it's this size, it's an MP4, so we can take normal software like PowerDirector and edit your MP4 or do whatever you want to do with it. So you take that file and say, okay, I've got this, 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 and this. And then I can say, okay, well, you've got an MOV. Your TV doesn't play MOVs. Most TVs only play MP4s, generally. So the best thing to do is get out your owner's manual. If you've lost it, just go online, Google it, and you can find your owner's manual any place and find out what kind of formats it takes. So when you call us, you can say, hey, my TV takes you know this, it takes this, it takes this, or it only plays MP4s. So when we transfer it for you or tell you how you can transfer it yourself, you'll make sure you end up with the correct file that will play on your TV. If your TV plays MP4s and we make you uh, QuickTime, you're out of luck and vice versa. Not going to work too well. Exactly. And so now be careful, too. We had somebody that came in that had us make 300 flash drives for them, and we needed to find out, well, what format do you want it? That, well, well, people are going to be doing this, 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 and this. Well, if you get a big enough flash drive, you put an MOV on it. You can put the MP4 on it, and you can put a QuickTime, so no matter which computer or TV they have, it'll play on all of them. So you need to know some of this information before you get started. Exactly. Just like when we teach you when you're transferring any of your films or videos, what is your end point? We're talking fundamentals here, and it's great stuff. Thanks so much, Tom. See you next week. Thank you. We'll be here. And that wraps up our show for this week. Thanks once again to handwriting analyst Nancy Douglas from writemeaning.com. That's W-R-I-T-E meaning.com for coming on the show and talking about the personalities of my ancestors as she was able to determine it from old Bible records, and I'm sure she could do some of the same for you. Hey, and don't forget, next week we'll be talking about all that's gone on at Roots Tech. It's going to be a great show. Talk to you then. And remember, as far as everyone knows, we're a nice, normal family.